The changes to the notification service are significant, and in effect, that's the class that implements push notification calls from the server. Before we start, we need to add a few fields to the class. These will be used by the code we introduce soon. These are besides the keys field I mentioned before. This is the URL of the codename one push server. We'll use that to send out push messages. Logging is used for errors in the body of the class. We need to inject the user's repository now as we need to find the user there. The first step is trivial. It's about mapping the push key to the service class, which is exactly what we do here. On push registration, we invoke this method to update the push key in the user object. If the push server indicates that a push key is invalid or expired, we delete that key. A fresh key will be created the next time the user runs the app. The second method is internal to the server and it isn't exposed as a web service, but the former method is. The next stage is the push notification itself. We add these lines to the send notification method. Notice that a push key can be null since it can expire or might not be registered yet. This leads us to the send push notification method, but we'll get there via detour. This method is based on the server push code from the developer guide. Notice that this is the impl method, not the method we invoked before. We'll go through this first and then reach that code. We connect to the push server URL to send the push message. A standard form post submission request is used. We fetch the values for the fields that can defer specific, uh, specifically the certificate and passwords, which vary between production and development. We send all the details as a post request to the codename one push server which then issues a push to the given device type. The server can return 200 in case of an error, but if the response isn't 200, then it's surely an error. The server response is transformed to a string for passing on the next method. I'll cover the read input stream method soon. We need to go over the responses from the push server. These responses would include information such as push key expiration and we would need to purge that key from our database. That's all done in the actual method for sending push messages. The async annotation indicates this method should execute on a separate thread. This is handled by Spring. We'll discuss that soon. Send push impl returns JSON with messages which we need to process. The Spring JSON passing API has different forms for map slash list, but we can get both in the response from the server, so we need to check. If it's a list, then it's a device list with either acknowledgement of sending for Android only or error messages. If we have an error message for a specific device key, we need to remove it to prevent future problems with the push servers. If we got a map in response, it could indicate an error, which we currently don't really handle other than through logging. If push doesn't work, the app would still work fine, you will just need to refresh manually. A better implementation would also use a fallback for cases of push failure, for instance WebSocket, but it's not essential at least not at first. We referenced read input stream in the previous code blocks. It's defined in the code as such. I could have written more modern code using NIO, but I was running out of time and I had this code handy. It does the job well. Next we expose the push registration method as a RESTful web service. This is a direct mapping to the update method so there isn't much to say about that. 
The last piece of the server code is the changes we need to make to the Facebook clone server application class. We didn't touch that class at all when we started off, but now we need some changes to support the asynchronous send push notification method. First we need the at enable async annotation, so at async will work in the app. The at bin for the async executor creates the thread pool used when we invoke an at async method. We define reasonable capacities. We don't want an infinite queue as we can run out of RAM and it can be used in a denial of service attack. We also don't want too many threads in the pool as our server might overcrowd the push servers and receive rate limits. This level should work fine. With that, the server side portion of the push support is done.